going and welcome to The Guitar Effect, I'm Rob. In this episode we're going to be taking our second look uh, in our series um, about the Line 6 HX effects. Um, specifically this evening we're going to be taking a look at how it can be used to switch between amplifiers um, and also to augment those amplifiers with uh, different effects but mainly just as an amp switching device. It's very powerful in that respect. But before we do, um, I would ask you to please like and subscribe so you can be kept up to date with everything we're doing here at The Guitar Effect. Um, hit the bell notification as well so you'll actually get notified. Um, okay, so first of all, I wanna talk about something. And um, this is gonna be a short video and also it's not gonna be a whole lot of playing because unfortunately, I broke my finger um, on Saturday morning. So whatever, four days ago, five days, four days ago, I fell down the stairs in my house and unfortunately bent my finger into a position that a finger should never really be in. So this is gonna be quite a short video tonight and it's gonna be not much playing, um, but I wanted to try and get something out for you guys. So um, we're gonna have a look at the HX effects um, and the two amplifier heads that I use and how I'm setting up the beginning of my recording patches with the HX effects to be able to allow me to have the most variety of sound available for any particular track I may decide to take at any one time, all with you know either the editor on which I'll be showing on screen, or else even when that's set up, just hitting buttons with my feet. So um, first of all, well, I suppose we'll go into a diagram, uh, and I'll show you how this setup is set up because it's pretty complex. And after that, we'll go into some sounds. So yeah, so let's have a look at the diagram about how I'm using the HX effects as an amp switcher. Okay, so what we're effectively trying to do here um, with this diagram is to show you the necessary wiring connections, and it requires a diagram because it's really complicated, to allow you to plug two amplifiers into the uh, to two amplifiers out of, I should say, the uh, HX effects, um, and also to allow you to take a direct out separate to that into your recording interface so that you can reamp it. Well, recab it in this case after the fact, although you could entirely reamp it as well, um, but that's not the way I'm running it. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to plug your guitar in, how to plug, how to root one amplifier's effects loop. Um, how to plug a separate second amplifier in and then how to run a second um, output from one of those chains that only takes the preamp and plug it into your interface. So obviously for this you're going to need the helix or the HX effects, excuse me, you're going to need your guitar, you're going to need two amplifiers, both, well one has to have an effects loop, one doesn't, um, and then you're going to need an interface uh, if you want to record all three simultaneously that has three inputs that you can run simultaneously. So. Okay, so here's the, it's all very clearly laid out, although there's a lot of connections. If you want to download the diagram and spend more time with it, if there's something you want to try, um, it's the diagram is, is easy enough to understand and it's available uh, in the description of the video. Okay, so here are the things to do. I'm gonna look off camera now because I'm looking at the description to see what I'm talking about. So the first thing you do um, is you plug your guitar into the left mono input of the HX, HX effects. That's pretty straightforward. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to connect the um, use effects loop one on the HX effects to connect. In my case, my first amp's effects loop. Sorry, use the effects loop to connect my first amp's preamp. So how I do that is I take the send from effects loop one with the first purple cable, which is number two, and plug the HX send into the laney input. So HX send one into the laney input. And then the next thing I do is I take a second purple cable, they're not actually purple, but for the purposes of the diagram, um, I take the second cable and plug it from the effects return of the, <coughs> excuse me, got a bit of a frog in my throat, from the effects return into the Laney effects send. So that takes a preamp, which is in between the input and the effects end, and routes it into an effects loop on the HX effects, which is effectively like taking a preamp or a distortion pedal and putting it into the effects loop. The next thing you do then is you take um, the left or mono output and plug it into the effects return, um, which then plugs the output into the power amp of the um, amplifier. And then the next thing that you do is you take very simply the right output and plug it directly into the input of your second amplifier. And this is doing exactly the way I want to do it. Um, 
I'm going to show you the connections in this part and then it, as you go on to the next part of the video where I demonstrate you'll see why I choose to wire things the way I do like why it doesn't affect looping use in one amp and not in the other um, so yeah second green connection is the right output directly into the input of the cock or in, in my case and you're in your case whatever second amplifier you choose to use then um, in this particular diagram there are three recording connections that are illustrated with dotted blue lines so the first one is you take the emulated output on the back of the laney which is in my case or in your case simply amp one and you run it into any one of the three available inputs inputs you have then you take the um recording output or emulated output from the second amp in my case the cox studio tone 20 um, and you make sure that both of these for the way i'm going to do it are emulated outputs right so they're not line outs with no speaker emulation i'm using ones with speaker emulation and there's a reason why i'm doing that in the particular setup i'm running which will become apparent later in the video um yes sorry you take the emulated output from the second amplifier and run it into another input any input on your DAW or on your recording interface excuse me and then the last thing you do is you take effect send two which is the first they have to send from the remaining unused effects loop on the hx effects and you run it directly into a input on your recording interface so you have one input on your recording interface taking the emulated out from your amp one another one taking the emulator out from amp two and another one that's just coming straight from the remaining effects send because you've used one of the effects loops already for the effects for the preamp on amp one and you take the send two and you run it into your whatever input on your DAW so your DAW, your not your DAW your recording interface your recording interface has emulate emulated out amp one emulated out amp two and straight out from effects loop to on your HX effects and that's all the connections there are eight connections that you will need to make to run this setup okay and just I've, I've already kind of covered the purpose of this and I will go into great depth but the purpose for this is to do, allow you to do three things to have th two amplifiers plugged into the two outputs of the HX effects the next thing is to plug the effects loop sorry to plug the preamp I keep getting that wrong to plug the preamp of amp one into your HX effects so you can move it around the signal changes you see fit and then crucially the last thing I'm doing is again taking what I call a tap off of the signal chain on amp one into a separate input on my DAW to allow me to apply either an IOR or a cabinet simulation of a different cabinet after the fact which can dramatically change the tone as you'll as you'll hear in the sound example which effectively in my case my laney in my opinion with the onboard cabinet, cabinet simulation and also playing through a cabinet in the room kind of sounds like a brown face fender to me so the clean channel is kind of fendery but it has more mids and breaks up in a kind of creamy sort of brown face kind of way tweedy kind of way is what i should say not brown face i'm not even familiar with brown face but tweed the dirty channel has a tweedish character to it to me however i know laney's are british and are known to have to be capable of some vox-esque tones so what i'm doing here is i am trying to emulate a vox so that when i go to sit down and do some recording i have a vox tone available to me by taking a tap off of the preamp of the laney without speaker simulation running it into my DAW and then applying a vox style IOR or cabinet simulation whichever I prefer on it after the fact which I demonstrate in the next section of the video so what that allows me to do is if, if I I'm going to record a part or indeed going to record a number of parts over the course of a record that I'm recording I can sit down with my HX effects and with some switches like you can either choose the cock which is a Marshall style and um, plexi and jcm style amp i can choose the laney which is a in my opinion fender sort of black face to tweed kind of amp or i can select the tap off the laney with a different cab which would give me a vox-esque sound all with just switches on the ground and without amp modeling or anything like that it's two amplifiers and then i'm changing the tonal characteristics of the cab on the second amplifier to give me three amplifier options all switchable from the hx effects which when i think when you sit down to 
to track a part in a song or indeed as I, as I mentioned track a lot of parts as you go through uh, an EP or a record to have a consistent guitar saying go throughout but still have flexibility it's a really really handy way of doing it you just to be able to hit some switches on the floor and route the guitar signal whatever way you want it um, I think it works out really well so that's it for the diagram and um, let's get into some sound examples okay for the purposes of um, demoing this setup this evening I'm gonna be playing my brand new parts caster that I built um, I'll do another video about this because it's turned out to be a really really great guitar and I'm really enjoying it um, and basically it's a mahogany bodied Telecaster um, with a Squire Classic 5 neck, a P90 in the neck and a DiMarzio Chopper T in the bridge um, with a standard wiring of volume and tone, three way selector and uh, brass saddles. So um, I've been doing a video on this but I've been really enjoying it lately and uh, the middle position's out of phase so that is the back pickup, this is an epic. The tone's on full, and this is the middle setting. Kind of quacky. Again, apologies for my playing this evening, folks. My, uh, I've only really got these two index and middle finger, so what I can play is quite limited. So, as we may have mentioned already, what I'm here to talk to you about um, is specifically the HX effects and how it can route your guitar to different amplifier situations so um as you would have seen the diagram um i have the cox studio tone 20 head and the laney uh, l5 studio head both simultaneously um running their emulated outputs into the back of my interface but then i've also taken a uh effects send from the um laney side of the signal chain um, and taking it direct into the interface on a different channel in Logic and then I've applied a Amplitube cabinet simulation to it um, and that cabinet simulation is specifically a Vox on Nickel Blue style cabinet simulation. Um, okay, so there are the three feeds I have running in. So just to show you what all those different things do, okay, um, here is the Laney using the onboard cabinet simulation which is supposed to kind of sound a bit fendery, I think, so. It's worth mentioning I have the gain on the clean channel on the Laney um, at about seven, which is maybe two o'clock. So it's pushing somewhat if I, it's clean if I play lightly. Sorry, my playing's really suffering. But if I dig in, okay. So that is the Laney sound. Um, and back pick up on the Laney sound. Same thing if I play lightly, clean if I dig in, got a bit of dirt. Then if I hit the um, route two switch here, which is on, you'll see it on switch six here on the HS effects. It goes from that over to the cock, which sounds like this. If I'm sitting down to record a part on a track, or even more so if I'm sitting down to record all the guitar parts um, on a project, therefore there straight away I have a clean sound and a distorted sound from two different amplifiers that I can tweak to be whatever way I want and that will give me a consistent sound throughout the course of that project, which is how I like to do things. I like to take things one project at a time and see how I want the guitar in that project to sound when I'm recording something. I don't like having endless options. I like to pick something that is an effect the sound of that record and stick to it. So in this case, I could say, well, okay, the Laney is going to be my clean or off clean sound. So and then if I want to dig in, or indeed I could add a boost in front of it to get a little bit more dirty. Okay. 
and simultaneously I could go okay so they, they will work for the cleaner sounds on the record and then for when I'm doing heavy stuff I'm going to use the cock and the great thing about it is the way that the uh, HX effects allows you to root things the, those two options um, are permanently wired into the back of my interface, set up in my studio and controllable and selectable from the HX effects, which is amazing. Um, okay, so then the other thing I can do is say I'm on that laney sound. And I'm going to try and make it sound a little bit more like a Vox. Now, maybe I haven't spent enough time with this particular sound and levels and stuff and input and output gain and stuff like that to make it work, but I'm just showing you in principle that it could work. So I can switch on a send which is taking the signal and routing it to a different output before it goes to the Laney's output section. So what's happening here is the preamp of the Laney is in use, but then I'm taking a send into a different input on my uh, interface that's on a different channel on my DAW where I have applied a different speaker cabinet simulation that sounds like this. <laughs> entirely different sound even with the boost on to this. This is the Laney by itself. This is the Laney with the different cabinet simulation on. Which is really interesting. So that is the three different amp sounds that I have available to me with this setup all at this flick of a switch on the HX effects. So I can come to whatever part I want to record in whatever song I'm trying to record at a particular moment in time and go, okay, I'm going to use the cock and I am maybe going to put a boost or an overdrive in front of it, which I have on the uh, pedal board as well. And I'll be doing a video about the pedal board separately and why I've chosen to put what I've chosen to put on the pedal board. Um, it's a home recording pedal board. It's never going to leave here. Um, and it's set up for that purpose. So I suppose the next thing to talk about is how you would route that and how you would set that up using the HX edit software. So I'm going to go over to the HX edit software now and show you how that's set up. Okay, so here we are in the HX edit software and it's going to go over to the edit panel. We'll talk about the foot switch assign after I've gone through everything. So here is the signal chain, okay? My keyboard's disconnected itself. So. I have the input, in this case, the left input, and then I have a looper here, which I'll speak about in a minute. And then after the looper, it goes, it has this um, split, and one side goes off on a chain by itself, which is the, um, goes off on a chain by itself and only has this delay in it. And this here is the cock side, okay? So this is the heavy, martialish JCM 800 sounding side. And I would only ever want maybe a, little bit of a transistor um, tape kind of delay. So if I go in here, I have a transistor tape delay on. And if I turn that on, sorry, go to it. Okay. I can control that with the tap tempo, obviously. If I had it selected as a tap tempo, which is very easy to do, you just, Click this, it's on quarter notes. Okay, so that's the only effect I have on the cock side because it's a heavy sound and I would never really want effects on a heavy sound. So then if I go back here, you can see on the other side, there's a few blocks in, in, in place, right? So the, again, we're going to the looper and then if we stay on the top, this is the laney signal chain. So the first thing that happens here is you have this effects loop. And as I'll have illustrated in the diagram um, that you would have seen before this, this is where the Laney's preamp is inserted into the signal chain. Um, I'll have shown the wiring of how to do that in, in the diagram beforehand. So this is send return brings the Laney's preamp into play here. And then after that, um, we have a delay and a reverb. Obviously you can put whatever you want in there. And then we have this send. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate the delay and the reverb. So it's going guitar through the pedals on my pedal board into the HX effects. And then it's going through the preamp of the Laney 
and then there is a delay and uh, reverb effect on the laney. So switch back over to the laney side and I turn on the delay. Okay, and then I can turn that off and turn on the reverb. playing and um, it's really difficult with this splint on so you can hear then that the reverb and delay are and just to show you that those re that reverb and delay don't work on the Marshall side so if I switch over to Marshall side and wind my volume down this will show you the Marshall side. and I turn on the elephant man nothing the searchlights nothing they're only on the laney side of the signal chain okay so back over to the laney and then, as you can see here, we have the extra send. So if I click on this, you can see then if I turn it on, the controls of the send are you have a send level and then a dry through. And this is really important if you want to do this. If you want, and this, as I said, is switching between the onboard output section on the Laney um, and its onboard cabinet simulation. If you want to switch between that and then another uh, cabinet simulation option after the fact. Um, then you set up the send and you kill the dry through. Because the dry, the dry through, the dry through, excuse me, um, takes a signal and sends it out of the extra output, but also sends a signal continuously to the output that that send signal chain is going to. So I'll explain what I mean. If I have send on right now it's going to that vox style cabin emulation okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a modulation block here i'm going to assign a tremolo to it just to show you what i mean okay and i know because you can see that doesn't work but if i turn off so when i have the send turned off the signal is going along here, not going to the send and going to that tremolo pedal and out of the left output. Okay. Now, if I turn this on, you can see tremolo is gone. And that's because the signal is terminating on the signal chain here and going out. If I take this drive through and pull it up, you'll hear both the Laney's onboard output and the extra send that I'm sending out. And how you will know that you're hearing them both is you'll hear both a, a signal with tremolo and a signal without tremolo. The signal with tremolo is the Laney's onboard preamp that's going direct to the main output. And the signal without tremolo is the send I'm breaking off the signal chain here and sending to the extra channel in logic with the Vox simulation. So here it is. You can hear the tremolo is present, but also the, the regular sound is present. If I dial back the dry through, no tremolo, but if I switch the send off, tremolo. Okay. Now that is the beginning of explaining how you can do wet dry with the HX effects, but I'll make a whole other video about that. So I'm going to get rid of this tremolo. So that is in effect the way that the signal routing is working and allowing me to select these three different amp tones with foot switches on the floor. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you is how you set up those uh, controllers. So this is really simple. So the other thing I have here is I have this one switch looper on the end of the board. Um, and the reason I have that there is really useful is for taking a part that I'm going to record, auditioning it, so just looping it once or something of that nature, something that sounds like it or uh, you know a short iteration of it. And looping it and then I can go fiddle with the EQ or gain structures on any of the amps that I'm going to record it with to effectively audition the sound before the fact it's really useful so if I'm playing a part of the I can go right Right. 
So you can get the really ultimate usefulness of that in any one of those sounds that I was auditioning there. I could have gone over to the amplifier and turned the knobs and it, the sound would have changed in real time. And then I could have found what I really, really liked and gone into Logic or whatever DAW you want to use and just gone and laid the part down and the sound would have been exactly as I wanted it. Um, really useful feature that and definitely a useful addition for this particular type of, I mean, what you're probably talking about here is like global rhythm tones that you're going to use for the duration of an EP or a record or something like that. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's the looper. Um, and I'll just show you how you really quickly now, how you set up uh, lastly, the switches to do the differences you want. So it's really simple. Um, as you can see, I'm in the uh, bypass controller assigned section here. So you can see foot switch four, foot switch two, one, three, six, and five. And basically they are the, what the switches are assigned to. So it's one switch looper, which is, they have two types of looper on the HXFX, one that just everything can be controlled with the one switch that you see all the time. And then the other uh, type of looper is the six switch looper where all six switches change from this mode of individual effects to all controlling the looper. I use the one switch looper. So I have that assigned to foot switch four. So I go to foot switch four and put it, or you can see here, switch looper bypass, pull it down. It's on foot switch four, okay? Um, and there's different things you can assign that foot switch to do, but I have it just to bypass, okay? Then I go to elephant man. So elephant man is in foot switch two. And you can see here that if I pull this down, I could choose to assign it to whatever foot switch I want. And that is how you assign all of these things. Now, the one thing that's the two, well, I suppose the two things that are worth mentioning are, there is the send two here, which is this, is assigned to foot switch three. So um, that's how I'm switching between the Vox emulation and the Laney, or the attempted Vox emulation. I need to work on that. And then there is split AB here, and this is really crucial uh, about talking about how you switch between the cock and the, the laney successfully. So that is effectively this. Okay, so this little node here with the on off switch here. So I have assigned that to split AB to foot switch six, which you can see down here. It's called route two. I'm pretty certain I can rename that if I want. Um, so the type is latching. Obviously, that just means that you don't have to hold it down every time you, you switch it. It'll switch on and off. And then the crucial thing is I have the A, which is the laney here, rooted all the way to the left output. So none of the laney is going to the right output. And I have the cock rooted all the way to the, the right output, left being generally the first output and right being the second one. Um, and that means that when I switch that switch, it switches between these two outputs. Really simple. Uh, and then the switch LED obviously just controls what color the switch will be. You'll see on the camera there, the switch changing color. I like to leave it at the white for the switch between the two channels. So I differentiate from the effects. And that is how you set up the signal path and how you set up the switching. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, it's a pretty versatile piece of kit, this HX effects in even putting the effects aside uh, and how we can just use it to switch between amplifiers and also route different parts of your amplifier, being the preamp, through different um, outputs to be able to use those outputs for different purposes. Um, this is a first in the recording section of um, how, what, how I use the HX effects and what my intentions for it are. There'll be a few more of these videos which I'll go into more depth about specific sounds that I'm going to use for specific projects that I'm working on and how I can set up banks or presets um, within the unit to facilitate that, um, which is also really handy. Uh, but for tonight anyway, that was um, the purpose of the evening's demo to just show you how it can be used really simply to just at the beginning of your project decide which amp tone you're trying to go for and how to get that. So. Hope it was helpful. Um, if you need the diagram, it'll be available for download in the description. Um, and if you have any questions, fire them down in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer. Um, so please like and subscribe. Uh, and I guess I'll see you in the next video soon. Thanks very much.